In this video, I am going to talk about uh, SQL Server Table Partitioning. What is Table Partitioning? Let us say you have a table which is uh, over 100 GB. Generally, if, uh, if a table is uh, greater than 50 or 100 GB, uh, you call it as a very large table. So, let us say you have a very large table and uh, sometimes it is uh, difficult to manage the very large tables in terms of, uh, for example, uh, to take backups okay, or to do index maintenance. Sometimes you may want to update the statistics, but updating statistics might take really a long time. Okay. More importantly, you have SQL queries are slow. Okay. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, you might want to delete uh, some 100 million rows and, you know, load or unload the data. For example, you might want to delete 100 million rows or you might want to add 100 million rows into a table. Okay. In those scenarios, it will be a little difficult. You know, it will take, uh, you might, you might acquire logs, uh, tables, uh, table level logs or, you know, uh, the partition level logs, whatever it is. You might acquire a table level logs if you are uh, doing a lot of deletes, bunch of deletes on a table. Okay. So, you might acquire, you might create blockings. So, generally a deleting uh, millions of rows or inserting millions of rows into a very large table uh, can be a problematic. Okay. Uh, sometimes taking backups or doing index maintenance. These are some of the scenarios uh, which could be a problem against a very large table. Okay. So, if this table is really smaller, uh, for example, you might be having a 500 MB table or 1 GB table. Okay. So, you do not see these things are really a problem. So, why do these things become problem, this issue, uh, this uh, taking backups and all those things? Let us say you are taking backup, you have a table which is around uh, 500 GB. Okay. In, in a data warehouse uh, environment, you will be having fact and dimension tables. So, if a transactions, sales or orders you, for these fact tables and you have data for large 20, 30 years. Okay. So, the table might contain the fact table, if you think about the fact table, fact uh, transactions, okay. fact transactions table, it might be the table itself, the primary key index, let us say uh, the primary key is clustered. Okay. The primary key itself would be around, you know, I am just guessing 800 GB and let us say you have a uh, uh, some of the non cluster indexes okay let's say you have around uh, eight non cluster index and each one is around uh, 400 gb you know something like that just i'm thinking okay so think about this you have around 1 terabyte uh, primary key index and non cluster indexes are around uh, 2 terabytes okay so the table itself will be occupying the particular table uh, one or uh, 1 to 2 terabytes generally if you are storing data in a very uh, a huge uh, volume transaction application, the table might itself can be up to 1 to terabytes, okay, 1 to 2 terabytes. So, managing a 1 terabyte table is a problem actually, okay. You might want to partition the data. So, what is partitioning a data? So, if you do not partition a data, for example, let us say you create a table, create table, table name and you specify all column names and you do not specify a file group. Okay. If you do not specify a file group, it will be, it, the table will be created in a default file group. Okay. So, whatever it is, you can specify a file group or you, you do not need to, you, you do not specify a file group. Basically, when you create a table, the table will be created as a non-partition table. Entire data, entire partitioning, okay, entire partitioning, uh, sorry, the primary key will be created on one partition. Okay. If you look into sys.partitions table, you will see one record for every index, f for, for every index and, and combination of index and partition. partition. Okay. So, 
So you will see one partition for the primary key. Okay. So if since it's a cluster, it, it will have index ID as one. So non-cluster indexes, you will see every non-cluster index will be on its own partition. So just one partition for every index. Okay. So when you scan a data, for example, you have, let us say, let us say you have data, sorry. Okay, this data is for last 20 years and uh, this is one terabyte and uh, you have a query and you are in the query you are saying you wanted a fact table. Let's say you have a fact transactions table. Okay, you are saying select star from fact tables, fact transaction tables, where date uh, for last uh, two years, okay, date uh, between 2013 and 2015, okay, you are saying query like this, go get all the transactions or do something, you, you are doing some grouping, okay, you, are, you don't want to see the, all the fact, all the transactions between these two dates, you will be really getting some millions or you know billions of rows from the fact table, right? So there might be some lot of activities for every transaction, transaction might be initiate, uh, go into several uh, status and after that you change the status, you close the transaction, you cancel the transaction, there will be a bunch of records for every transaction, okay? Because this is fact table you are going to record based on that SCD you are um, implementing, okay? So there will be uh, 500, there, let's say there are 200 million uh, rows for, uh, for last two years of data. Okay, you are writing a query like this, select star from fact transactions where date between this. Okay, so when you write a query on a non-partition table, that means a regular table. So the table is one terabyte, it contains uh, last 20 years of data. It contains, let us say, uh, 5 billion rows, okay, for last 20 years. But for the last two years, it has 200 million rows, okay. But for the remaining years, it has, uh, uh, you know, it has the remaining rows, okay? So here in this query, when you say select start from uh, this table where date between the last two years, so it is going to scan the entire table, okay? It is going to scan the entire table. So it is going for table scan. Okay, so in this case, it will be a problem. Your query will be uh, slower. So you have to tune these kind of queries. You cannot avoid, avoid table scan because you have to do a range scan, right? This query is doing a range scan for last two years, for last one year or for last six months. But still, it might go for a cluster index scan. It might scan the entire cluster index, okay, which you don't want because always scanning a bigger index will be a problem. Okay, you don't want to scan for last entire 20 years for the for the range that you are looking for. Okay, you are looking for last two years of data. You wanted to group, uh, you wanted to find out every month how much, uh, what is the sales that company uh, did, right? For last two years, that's it. You don't, you're not interested. But still, there is only one index, uh, you know, a cluster index and it's going to do a cluster index scan. Okay, it cannot do seek because you're not looking for specific data. You are, you're, you are selecting a range of uh, records, okay? So these queries can be a problem. You, you cannot fine tune this, okay? Maybe you, you can do a little bit of uh, techniques, but uh, generally uh, it is little hard, okay? These kind of queries, this is, this is a problematic query, okay? So you cannot uh, fine tune beyond a certain point. It is going for a table scan, so okay. There are some other uh, things. Taking backups. You have uh, what uh, five billion rows for this table, and the table is uh, one terabyte. Okay, you take full backup of this database. Okay, database might be con might be having other fact tables. Just this fact table alone, it occupies one terabyte. Think about if you have other fact tables. Uh, okay, uh, you know in your star schema in data warehouse. Okay, you might be having uh, uh, you know some some of uh, other uh, fact tables. Okay, around four to five or ten depends on your your design. 
okay if you have another four tables of this size then what will be your database uh, size okay your database size will be 10 terabytes all right so if you take backup uh, how frequently you will take backup once a week once a month okay let's say your backup uh, plan is uh, take a full backup every week uh, and after that every day you take uh, differential backup okay or take full backup a week uh, you know monthly and take differential backup again you don't want to do that generally you will take full backup once a week and uh, and you will be taking differential backup okay you might be saying okay let's implement a disaster recovery solution i don't need to take uh, backups on this production server right still you have to take backup on the disaster recovery server and you have to set up a disaster recovery server so you need to have additional server right let's not think about it just let's uh, uh, let's say you have just one production server you want to take backup okay every week you take full backup and once uh, in uh, between the full, full backups you every day you take differential backup to cover yourself right in case of disaster and you lose the t server and you have to recover from the disaster so every day you take differential backups between the full backups think about it every day every week you take full backup the backup might itself run for more than 10 to 20 hours right also depends on the compression level that you have if you can use native compression or you can use uh, like, you know some, some third party compression tools so you can use some compression tools to to compress the data database back database backup okay so the backups might run for 10 to 20 hours that's a problem right you don't want to back up stale data okay see the data here the data here this is stale data okay this is not changing only the data which is changing is here this is current data okay this is uh, uh, what is date today okay April 15 okay so you are inserting the rows the transactions as of today okay sometimes you may insert uh, a transaction uh, uh, to a prior date okay depends on your scd you might go back and update a row here okay sometimes you may go and update a row here okay so let's say generally you will be uh, less frequently you will be modifying these rows and more frequently you will be inserting rows from april whatever the, from today onwards okay today you will be inserting some uh, as and when you receive the transactions sales transactions you will insert okay so typically you will be updating the data here so this is stale data you don't want to take backup of this stale data okay you don't want to take backup of this stale data every week right what you can do so how then you might think okay how can i uh you know you, so the partitioning will help you okay what you can do you can partition this table uh, like this okay just cut this table okay and after that you can take uh, file group backup that means you can put this uh, partition okay this partition in a different file group and just take this file group backup just one time And you keep taking backups of the changing data this is the f frequently changing data so you t you you take backup of this data and even you can put this file group in a read only mode this file group okay so that you know you don't uh, change the data abruptly if you ever change the data you can you can take again one more backup of that file group basically the idea uh, uh, the, the concept is here you don't want to take uh, backup of stale data every week okay so thereby you are saving the backup time save backup time how uh, by taking the backups of uh, backup of uh, stale data just one time okay oh, sorry data all right so like that if you see these are other advantages we talked about taking backups we talked about queries okay index maintenance for example uh, you have 800 GB of uh, uh, primary key clustered primary key okay uh, you know you wanted to rebuild or reorg so when you rebuild what happens it will create another 800 GB of index, okay, 
a defragmented index finally it, uh, it 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 does a partition switch actually okay if you do index maintenance you will know basically uh, you know so let us say you have an index in your data file okay this is a data file and you have an index okay this index is uh, uh, 10 GB okay when you do defrag uh, that means uh, defragmentation means rebuild or reorg okay rebuild again you have online and offline okay so when you do a rebuild what happens it will create another 10 10 gb okay defragmented 10 gb finally it will do a partition switch okay um, it will just uh, discard this partition and just do a, a, a partition switch while doing a partition switch you will see that schema locks being acquired on the table to do a partition switch okay so let us say this is 800 gb index okay and you need to have additional 800 gb in your data file depends on the uh, rebuild online or offline okay so you need to have additional 800 GB of the of space uh, inside the file. You think about it. Uh, this will take really long time. Index maintenance on these uh, big tables. Okay, you don't need to. First of all, you are rebuilding the entire index. The entire index is not updating. The recent last two years, part of the index is only upda getting updated. Okay, but still you are rebuilding entire index. That can take long long time. Okay, the index maintenance running for a long time and acquiring more and more logs and you need more and more space to have additional 800 GB in the data file and log file, log file also. Okay, it will write 800 GB in, in the log file. So, you need 800 GB extra in the log file as well. So, basically, you need more space, you need more time to do index maintenance because if you don't do index maintenance, again, the, in, the queries might take a different plan and start executing a bad plan. Hence, it will run for a long time. Okay. So you need to do index maintenance. So you want either to do reorg or rebuild. It will definitely take longer. And you, so all kind of problems will be there. Okay, if, if table is be getting bigger and bigger, you will see the problems slowly. One or another, you will have difficult in maintaining the table, even updating the statistics. It is it's not easy. It's not easy to update stati statistics for a bigger table. Okay. So this term is kind of a loose term, you know, a very large table. Uh, so how how large is very large? Okay, it depends on the problem you are facing. Some people don't have a problem. Even the table size is one terabyte. Hey, that that's fine. They don't call it as very large table. So generally, uh, you know, uh, so very large means uh, according to whatever I read in the manuals, uh, 50 or 100 GB. Any table greater than 50 or 100 GB, you call it as a very large tables. Okay. So this is uh, another important uh, future of the partitioning. Okay, so the loading, unloading the data. Okay, in the fact table, if you think about it, every day you load the data into your fact tables. Okay, you get uh, the data uh, records uh, records from OLTP data data sources. Okay, you have heterogeneous data data sources. You are getting transactions orders from various sources okay you are you are putting into the staging table and you are doing data massaging transfer you are doing transformation and you, you are you are doing the you are doing the formatting and all those things you are doing finally from the staging table you wanted to load the data into the fact table okay how do you do that you will say okay insert insert into fact table okay select start from staging table right you can do this if you want with one statement you can just insert all the data from staging table into fact table right but how long is that's going to take this every day you are you are getting uh, you know 2 million uh, transactions okay you are getting 2 million or 3 million or sometimes 100 million right so let us say for decent uh, number of records 5 million rows okay every day you are loading if you say this this kind of query it might run really long long time right and every day you are inserting it might it might uh, do a uh, you know it might do a page split it might do a page split and can cause the fragmentation as well okay moreover it will take really long time 
it is not going to take in it's not going to be inserted it's, you cannot load within one second right simply i can say it will take at least 10 minutes for example 10 minutes to load 5 million rows okay so lot of problems will be there uh, as the table is getting bigger and bigger so how to avoid this kind of problems okay that's where this uh, partitioning come into picture okay so let's look into what is partitioning now let us say you have table okay fact table fact transactions and this fact transaction is uh, you have last uh, data for last 20 years okay it contains uh, 5 billion uh, rows okay so what you do this is a non partition table uh, for uh, from 1995 to 2015 you are doing business from 1995 to 2015 okay so you partition this table okay by gender you know by default uh, when you create a table it will be created as a non partition table okay entire data will be in one index now what you what the plan is you you partition the data okay so something like this This is from 1995 to 2005. Okay, you can you can do something like this. So this is uh, 2005, 2006, 2007, like that, 2014, and this is 2015. This is open. This partition is open because you. It, the partition will be closed because you create a, uh, this partition is open because 2015 is you are you are we are still in 2015 okay so now think about it if i write a query and the query needs the data for last two years okay for last two years this is 13 for last two years then what what will what your query will do in the query you will say where date between 2010 13 and 15 okay so now you are specifically saying you wanted the data for last two years then what are the partitions that you are going to touch okay you are going to you are going to touch these three partitions okay you are you are creating the chunk okay this is a big chunk you are you are creating the partitions for uh, every year let us say you are partitioning by year so you are touching your query is touching lesser partition okay the narrow down will be there okay so the query is not going to look into this query is not going to look into this data right your query is going to look into only these three partitions because you are looking for data from 2013 to 15 right so you are doing a partitioning elimination you are eliminating this partitioning you don't want to look into this data okay you are you are narrow down you are narrowing down the search for these three uh, files okay if every partition will reside on a file obviously finally right every partition when you create a part, uh, partition you you will say this partition is going to be on this file group and file group will be on a certain files okay so when you write a query like this so it is going to eliminate the all the previous uh, you know last 18 years of the data then then you know you are looking into very smaller files your query will be working with smaller files so that is one one thing other thing is you are if you take a look at the queries that you are running okay you might be having ssas cubes okay uh, you okay you, you you might be doing entire uh, uh, you know the entire cube or incremental whatever it is okay generally 
you are not interested you are generally you are you are not updating these rows right you are not updating these rows so so these file groups these every partition will be on each its own file group okay its own file group so you can make these file groups as a read only and you can leave this as read write so you can go ahead and update whatever the rows that you need okay so thereby you can reduce the backup times i partition the data based on year all 2005 data will be in one partition 2006 will be in one partition right i dis so how do you design that you have to look in look into your queries what are the general what are the queries that are generally uh, will be on the fact transactions table okay so uh, am i looking at the data month wise okay for last 3 months or 6 months or last uh, you know uh, first quarter second quarter okay so in that case you might want to partition based on the months actually instead of years you might want to partition based on the months so you have to design what is your partitioning uh, a range okay the boundary uh, boundary points you call this as a boundary point so what is this is you want to store entire 2007 in in one file or you want to create a file a partition for every 3 months okay for 2007 year there will be four partitions for every quarter okay even even partitions you can create the daily sometimes you you might want you might want to load staging uh, data from staging table into into fact table every day so it's better uh, to create partition every day so you might be having partitions every day partitions so how many partitions you can have okay uh, i think you can store you can create 15000 partitions in 2012 okay but this is limited in 2005 i guess this is uh, 9999 partitions you can create so 2012 you can create 15000 partitions but as you create more number of partitions it will slow down but again it's a requirement sometimes you might want to load data every day that i have selected date as a partitioning key on what basis i am going to partition this data based on the date column in the fact transactions table correct but it doesn't need to be all the time date criteria for some tables there is no date but you need to partition those tables so you need how do you design so now you know now you know why we need to partition the data right so partitioning data has uh, you you have several advantages of partitioning the data see sometimes you might not have a problem even though you might have a 500 gb table a table size size of 500 gb a non partition table of size of 500 gb okay but still you don't have any problems your queries are running fine you don't need to partition the data okay partitioning address specific problems only if you have those kind of issues then you need to consider about partitioning will partitioning help your problem okay partitioning is not only solution for bigger tables if you have bigger tables don't take the partition knife and cut those tables okay don't do that partitioning is 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 not the not only the solution okay but it can solve certain problems easily for example you might want to load the data faster you might want to uh, delete the data faster okay for example uh, let us say you want to delete 1995 to 2005 right 10 years 10 years of data let us say you have 3 billion rows with partitioning if i partition the table i can delete 3 billion rows in 1 second less than 1 second from this table okay similarly if i want to delete 3 billion rows from a non partition table think about it even though you put the database in simple recovery mode it will still log the records all three it will log all 3 billion rows it will write 3 billion rows into the log file okay it is going to take a really long time no matter how good your hardware is 
but in the case of partitioning i can unload the data i can delete this 3 billion rows for last ten, in this 10 years i don't need this somebody decided okay we don't need this data we can drop this we can delete this data okay as you keep going forward you are in 2016 okay you don't need 2005 data as well okay remove this data you you make a decision in 2016 right if as you keep going as you keep uh, you know rolling into the new year you don't want the records for the uh, you know for certain years because you might want to maintain last 8 years of data in your in your database okay every year as you you pass by you keep deleting the eight and last um, uh, you know any any data which is greater than 8 years okay all the time you need to do some kind of archival mechanism you, uh, you need to have archival process to, to delete the data generally for the fact generally for the fact tables you might want to keep it but you might be having uh, you know some oltp tables very large oltp tables where you will do the archival process so you want to delete 3 billion rows from from this table if so that means uh, you don't want this chunk this partition data you don't want okay you can simply switch out the data to a to a different uh, table okay we will talk about how to do that but concept is you can delete 10 years of data 3 billion rows in one one second less than one second okay similarly to insert 3 billion rows into this table is just one second into the partition table it is not as easy with the non partition table okay like this you know it has its own benefits partitioning has own benefits again partitioning is not new actually it is there for very long time okay uh, but uh, it is not a uh, you know uh, very you know very innovative or new technology it is there for a very long time but it's in a different form actually in 2000 sequel 2000 you have something called partitioning views okay in uh, this i'm talking about uh, partitioning views table partitioning has been introduced in sequel 2005 before 2005 you don't have the partitioning you have partition views we'll talk about what is partitioning views right now okay for a moment let us say you have a table us orders okay you have a table in usa you have this table in uk united kingdom not university of kentucky uh, you have a view for example you wanted to see all the orders usa orders and uk orders all the orders in one view okay what you do you will create a view in the view you will say select star from us orders right similarly union maybe union all select star from uk orders this is in usa this is in uk okay different servers all together they are not in <coughs> same servers you have order some U us based orders in uk usa usa server and you have uk based orders in uk server you have the same company having branches all over the world okay to view the order there is a there is a view called orders this is a view actually if you say select star from orders that view it is going to it is going to get all the data from us orders and union all the orders from uk orders right think about it okay you these are in two different servers since you have the data in two different servers this is called distributed partitioning view if these two tables are in the same server then it is called local partitioning views sorry local partition view all right let us say you have uh, uh, you have a us uh, so here if you see uh, select star from orders you are joining these two tables okay if you have the same table okay uh, us table uh, 2015 okay and there is another table us 2014 so if you want to join if you want to see all the orders 
select then you have to say select star from us 2014 union all select star from us 2015 right then you this is a view okay these two tables reside in the same server so you can join as many tables union select star from us 2013 right all the years you can keep doing union union all union all right so the table partitioning the you know it's there actually you know uh, the partitioning view uh, it is it is one way of uh, solving the the partitioning issue okay one way of solve you know one way of partitioning the data you have a uh, partial us orders in one one chunk one file and you have partial orders in another file like that you have orders in several different tables and you can you can union all all these tables and create a view combine uh, create a view and call it as orders okay and you can use those views you can create as many views as possible if you take a look at it uh, you know for example you can say let's say in this scenario okay you have us orders okay this is a local partition view the reason because these tables okay these are these are all tables okay these are all tables in the same server that is why it is called a local partition view so you are you are creating orders view and you are you are uni, you are doing a union all of all, all these tables so when you say select star from this select star from us orders you are going to get all the data right let us say my query is like this uh, select star from us orders okay this table this view where date greater than 2013 and less than 2015 okay if i write a query like this that means i am going to use the view right and i need the data from th 2013 to 15 then is it going to retrieve is it going to look we see my data <coughs> see here 13 14 15 right but see here union all select star from us 2012 us 2011 right like that you are joining for last 10 years if i write a query like this 2013 to 15 then it is going to look into every table unless you have a check constraint if you have a check constraint in these tables you are fine if you have check constraint in this table then it will eliminate oh uh, you are looking for data 2000 to 2015 then i don't need to look into this table i don't need to look into this table okay it is going to make the decision if you have proper constraints and things like that let us say you don't have any constraints okay the table contains data that's it, it but you are carefully naming the table as us 2012 and you are storing 2012 data you are not putting any constraint on the table saying that oh hey this table should only contain data for 2012 okay if you don't have any constraints on the table then when you say query like this then what happens it is going to look into all the tables to find 2013 14 15 data even though you are looking for 2013 still it doesn't know it doesn't know it should it shouldn't it shouldn't look look for this table it doesn't know that it still goes and do a table scan on this table okay that is that's is a problem with partition view partition view really you cannot enforce certain things to eliminate the partitions okay but you can create certain constraints on the table to eliminate those this, those tables okay this is one of the disadvantages of uh, partition view okay and the distributed partition view it has its own advantage right distributed you have U us orders and uk orders so this is in us server this is uk server there is no way see partitioning ta sql server table partitioning it is a scale up but this is a this is a scale out if you have a orders table in usa and uk this is the only way to see all to look into all the orders from usa and uk because you cannot create a partition table partition table partition 
will work only within that within that server but since the servers are distributed right in this case you have to go with distributed partition view the partition views are still there in sql server okay if you have a need to do to create a view to look into us orders and ukrs you have to go for distributed partition view okay all right so there are this this dpv and lpv they are there pretty much still we have it this lp local partition view is what is i'm thinking table partition table partitions replace this lpvs okay so this is if you think these are all orders table right you have 2015 orders here 2014 orders 2013 orders 2011 orders like that you have all the partitions are chunks of same orders but this this has particular data this is, so these are all partitions right so partition table partitioning is something like this that's it so so table partition is scale up sorry and dpvs are scale out okay table partitioning will not scale out before we uh, uh, you know look into the table partitioning uh, concept that is how to the next thing is you need to decide the partitioning key what is the uh, how, how do you design the partition key you have to decide you have, you have to select the partitioning key based on the queries you have to look into uh, the dmvs okay you have to look into the uh, the dmvs the cache to see uh, what queries that uh, you, you are executing based on the queries you have to look into the where class to see what is the general criteria people are searching for uh, data in this table sales transactions fact transaction table or generally a sales transaction table what are the queries most of the queries you know sometimes um, where transaction id equal to something transaction id equal to something right this is this will go for index seek if you have a proper index it will do index seek right so not a problem there now somebody might be looking the reporting queries looking for some kind of some range where customer name uh, i know i'm just thinking where customer name uh, greater than some uh, starts with f okay and name uh, ends with z okay some criteria like this so you have to you have to design a partitioning key properly and you have to decide what column you are going to create the cluster index okay so that is designing the table partitioning okay so you have to carefully do that now let's look into how to how to create the table partition first we have to create partition function okay and then we have to create partition scheme and then we have to create table on partition partition scheme okay so this is what we have to do so what is partition function scheme and all those things let's say you have a table uh, this is 2005 and this is 2015 okay so you you are partitioning every year that means you see here 2005 and this is 2000 this is 2006 this is 2007 like that 2014 okay this is this is range 
this is the partition this is what is called as boundary point this one okay this is boundary point okay so this is what boundary point so first if you see you need to divide this data into 10 okay so for to in order to divide this data for la from 2005 to 2015 you have to you have to break into 10 pieces okay every piece is one range okay so in order to uh, divide this into 10 uh, ranges partition ranges you have to create nine boundary points okay you have to create nine boundary points if you count this boundary point so every year december 31st uh, december 1st, 31st uh, you know uh, midnight 2359 okay so you what you can do you have to create the boundary point every year on january january 1st okay so in the, in the, you have to specify the boundary points so you have to specify nine boundary points to create 10 partitions okay in the partition function you specify the boundary points these are the boundary points and in the partition scheme you see here i wanted to divide this data i wanted to uh, i want to partition this big entire last 10 years data year wise then i have to say okay so if if you want to do divide this last 10 years data so i have to say okay what are the boundary uh, boundary points that is one thing i have to say so partition function specifies itself partition scheme says okay pa this this range data where you are going to put it okay where are you going to store this range okay so this partition scheme you will specify file groups okay on this file group this range will be on okay so partition scheme says which file will contain the data partition function says where is the what is the boundary points okay so you have to specify you have to specify two things right so that that's why you you create the partition function and after that uh, you know you create the partition scheme uh, and after that you create the table on partition scheme now let's take a look at uh, the implementation how you how you specify the partition function function and uh, partition scheme okay i have created this document i will post it on um, metamanager.com website you can um, you can go and grab it okay so basically i have listed on all the points whatever uh, how to create the partition function because you can't remember the syntax right lot there is plenty of syntax so you can't remember it so i have all the syntax here okay so all you need to do is just copy and paste and execute so you will be creating the partition table see here first you have to create the partition function in the partition function uh, i am i am partitioning the table based on the date okay so my boundaries are based on the date time column so i have specified okay this partition has three boundary points okay you can see here create partition function function name and i will tell you what is range right and all, all those things okay and after that we will create the partition scheme and there are uh, there are plenty of other topics uh, like uh, splitting the partition merging the partition uh, drop uh, dropping the t objects and switching switch in switch out and all those things okay first we'll create a simple uh, partition table okay i have this uh, vmware uh, let's go to this server let's create a separate uh, database for this partition okay i created this table uh, sorry this database partition db
okay so first uh, we have to create the partition function you see that here uh, I am creating three boundaries so what I am doing is Two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen, and fourteen. Okay, I am creating three boundary points. I have the the table. This is called as uh, uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, orders table. Okay, I have the orders table. Uh, uh, the table is. Uh, orders right okay the, the, the reason why I specified right because I this is a right range table okay I will tell you what is range right and range left okay so basically I have the table which contains the records for last uh, 10 years or 20 years I don't know okay but I am partitioning this table I am creating four partition you see that here I have the data from I have the data from 2001 okay so what I am doing is for whatever the lowest value I will say uh, negative infinity infinite values right I can store any value less than 2013 in this partition okay this is partition number one and this is another partition second partition partition number two okay this is third partition and this is fourth partition there are four partitions in this table so the second partition will only contain the data for 2013 you see that here this is january january 1st 2013 whatever the so it starts from january 1st that means it this this partition will only contain 2013 data this partition will only contain 2014 data you see that here it starts from it, this is the boundary point of january 1st this is a boundary point of two, january 1st 2015 so this all contains 2014 data so anything that is January 1st 2015 any any data that is greater and all these things going to store in this so what I'm going to do at in 2016 I'll create one more boundary point 2016 okay and after that I'll have one two three four five partitions as I as I keep moving forward I'll create I'll uh, keep creating the partition every year uh, January 1st okay January 1st uh, that when the time is zero 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 then I'll create the partition at that time okay so that is my goal then you might say okay what about uh, the data before 2013 you are storing everything before 2013 in one partition yeah I don't I'm not interested in I'm not interested in the data before 2013 okay why do you want to create multiple partitions and put them put put all of them before any data that is before 2013 put them in one partition one range okay because I'm not going to browse the data I can very well put the data in read-only mode okay most of the times I'm interested in 2013 14 15 last three years last two years for example okay so in that case I create a partition for 2013 okay and 2014 and similarly 2015 So that is what in this example okay so you have 2013 one boundary and uh, 2014 another boundary and 2015 one boundary that is what uh, in this uh, example here I am creating three boundary points and I have range right so let's talk about what is this range right and range left 
see here the boundary point is i am dividing this partition on this boundary point 2013 this is january 1st 2013 okay the my first boundary point is january 1st 2013 okay this is my first boundary point second boundary point is okay similarly my third boundary point is this See here, this boundary, any data, if a record has this value, this, okay, if a record has this boundary value, then where that record is going to, going to store, in which partition, okay, that is what the range right and left uh, decides. When I say, when I say this table as range right, and I define these three are the boundary points. Then what happens when I store the data? When I when I when I create a record, uh, a sales transaction orders table, and when I create an order record, and the order date is Jan exactly January first two thousand thirteen zero zero zero, then it is going to store in the right side of the boundary. Okay, in the right side of the boundary. That record. Okay, so that's what uh, this range right and range right uh, actually uh, when you do a uh, merge or split, I will explain you later. Oh, I know how to do why to why to merge why to split and how to merge and split. When you do a merge and split, then you will understand range right behaves differently than range left. There is a difference how when you do a merge. Okay, where the new file is going to go going to store. Okay, all right. So now let's take a look at the. See here, I have the I'm I'm creating the partition function. I hope you are following. I have created the partition function. Okay, there I just just the partition function. Okay, let's take a look at, um, not here storage. Here you can see partition function, partition schemes here. See here, there is a warning. I purposefully created this way because you see that here I specify the boundaries, okay? Boundary 1, boundary 2, and boundary 3. It doesn't need to be a boundary 1, boundary 2, boundary 3, okay? You can specify however way you want it. But when it actually, see, it says, Hey, you are specifying the boundary values. They are not in a particular order. Okay, see, boundary one is 2012, boundary two is 2013, this is 2014. They are not in order. You are saying 2013 first, and after that you are specifying 2012. Okay, but I am creating in a sorted order because uh, you know that's that's how I am going to work. So you you can specify boundaries however way you wanted in the partition function. This is the partition function, name of the partition function. And partition function can only accept one parameter. This param it can accept only one parameter. You cannot specify multiple parameters just because it is a function. Partition function is a specific function, specific type of function that it can only accept one parameter. I have uh, I have a script uh, that will list uh, the partition uh, partition de uh, partition function definition. Okay, let's open that script. See, to you have the partition schemes and partition functions. In order to generate the script, what you can do, you can script. Uh, sorry, you can generate uh, the script from here. You can say like this, see here, this is the way it is stored. Similarly, I have the function, I have the script which does the same thing. Okay, you can see that here, 2012, 2013 and 2014. Okay, and there are no partitions. We haven't created any partition yet. And now, now I'm creating the partition scheme. 
now a partition scheme i have to specify where the partition range is going to store okay partition function it will specify the boundary points and partition scheme it specifies the the file locations okay the file groups partition scheme create partition scheme partition scheme name as partition function on which partition function the scheme is going to be created okay so partition function it has three boundary points so i need to create four ranges you can see that here these are the three boundary points i'm i'm creating three boundary points and i have to specify 1 2 3 4 four ranges okay so this is how i specify okay so now you see it says partition function i cannot create because these file groups are not there so you have to create the file groups correct so we have to create the file groups before we create the partition scheme so you see here okay so now i created the file groups now i can create the partition scheme so if i execute the script it will show the partition scheme that i created okay it says 2000 2012 first partition is 2000 and second partition is 2012 and third partition like that four partitions okay now i have to create the table i create the table like this create table table name this is the usual uh, syntax you don't see any uh, anything here on generally you will specify the file group right so, but in the partition table you will specify the partition scheme actually the table it is going to be stored on a scheme partition scheme so you have to specify the scheme partition scheme name so you specify the part partition scheme and you have to specify the partitioning key on which key you are going to create the partition so this key date time has to match this see this partition scheme partition scheme is based on this partition function this partition function is having the parameter the partitioning parameter the date time right so it has to match this so i'm i'm saying this table this table is partition on the create date uh, the date time column so i need to have a partition function on date date time column okay so i create table like this you can see that here the table is created now let's insert some rows okay so these are uh, insert statements i'm going to execute okay so it says uh, we haven't created the files for the table okay so we have the file groups but we didn't specify the file groups files for these file groups okay uh, when we create when we insert the rows so where it's going to store right so we have to create the files so we have let's create some files okay i created the files now i can insert rows 
you can see I inserted uh, some rows okay let now let's select uh, from this table you can see okay so the reason why we don't have the number one uh, let's uh, uh, let's uh, delete the reason why we don't have number one because first time when we try to insert it failed okay since ID is primary uh, ID is uh, identity column that's why it reserved uh, okay so all right so you have to say like this okay now you can see we inserted 13 rows okay so but you see that here this is there is a partition function in the partition function this is this partition function you have to pass that partitioning key basically you wanted to know which partition contains how many number of rows okay so when you pass the partitioning key create date is partitioning key when you pass that partitioning key to a to a system function partitioning system function then it will give you which partition that record is you can see that here okay so order by create date you can see that here there are four rows in the partition 1 uh, 2010 2010 to 2011 so 2012 january 1st is going to the partition 2 the reason because it is range right you can see that here this is a range right that is why this row we inserted sorry this row we, row ins we inserted this row because this this is exactly on the boundary point and hence we s it, it went to the partition 2 okay so you can see that here 2012 in one partition 2013 in one partition anything greater than 2014 is one partition so totally four partitions you can see that here okay so this is how you see what partition this this record all right and now these are the some of the system <coughs> catalog views uh, for example you can see how many number of partitions for this table there are four partitions partition one two three four if it's a non-partition table you will just see one partition just one record not for non-partition table since this is a partition table uh, you will see uh, four partitions here okay for every partition how many number of rows here four rows this is easy way to identify okay in, in in a table if you just want to find out how many number of rows you can come to sys partitions and uh, find out how many number of uh, rows in the table okay but this is not 100% uh, correct 99.99% it is correct but for, for very highly f uh, frequently changing uh, tables there will be some lag okay but generally this is good so first partition has four rows okay this is partition id and the hobt id this is a heap uh, heap or b tree uh, id actually this this column okay this is also same value as partition id and you can compress the particular partition every partition you can compress in a different levels if you want so for example in this case uh, 
in this case this is the oldest partition this is partition number one right this is partition number one and this is partition two this partition you don't access you don't uh, write any query to get the data which is uh, two years and older okay so what you can do in order to have space saving space savings you can compress this data because anyway you don't access it why do you want to store in in its hundred percent okay you can compress this data and you can you don't need to compress this data because this is current right now you are accessing this data from 2013 14 15 you are accessing the data so you don't want to compress this partition and the oldest partition you don't want to uh, access you don't generally browse it very rarely or you may not so just uh, compress it right so that is why you see the compression level the column different for every partition that means every partition can have different compression levels okay so here this catalog view you can see what are the partition functions that you have we created partition function right so this is the partition function we created and partition uh, is range right and fan out is uh, number of partitions since it is three boundary points the fan out is four because there are four ranges boundary value on right is it a right range yes sorry range right okay so like that uh, this is a catalog view to see the partition function and similarly let's take a look at all this uh, all this in one shot okay so here you can see there are four partition this is the partition function this partition function accepts one parameter right partitioning parameter the date time so date time is 61 in the system dot types it is 61 okay how many bytes uh, it, you know, eight bytes blah 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 you can see that here and finally final uh, catalog view is range values you can see that here the first boundary point is 2012 second boundary point is this third boundary point is this okay so the, the here you can see the boundary points the range values okay sometimes programmatically you might want to find out what is the latest boundary point and you know for example in 2000, uh, 2015 january you wanted to create a, another partition right see here every year you are creating partition for 2013 14 and uh, 2012 13 14 right 2015 january on january 1st 2015 you are supposed to create an, another boundary point right programmatically every day you can check or every month first you can check hey this month is january okay then time to create the partition right so you can say okay what is the latest uh, a value latest uh, latest boundary value is it 2015 what is the date today to january 2015 okay then already boundary point is there okay so so you know programmatically you can uh, go through these values and see and see that okay now time to create 2015 let's create another uh, boundary point okay you can create a bunch of boundary points here okay so all right now this is these catalog views See, okay this talks about the scheme partitioning scheme okay the partitioning scheme so partitioning scheme is like uh, a file group right it's like a file group but it is actually a bunch of file groups so you can see that here this six five there are four file groups the destination pa for this partition scheme is four file groups fgl 2000 2012 right but these file groups are actually this you see that here two is is this one okay this is the first file group this is second file group this is third file group this is fourth file group there are four file groups in this partition scheme 2000 2012 right so it starts from two three four so these numbers are here that is why this is uh, a destination you call this as a destination data spaces okay finally file groups you can see uh, what is that file group and etc basically this these functions catalog views uh, will talk about uh, what is the partition scheme and what are the 
what are the file groups in that fi partition scheme and etc okay so you may have to know these catalog views if you are doing a lot of partitioning okay you will be using these catalog views a lot because programmatically you will be creating the new partitions you will be destroying you know you will be dropping the new partitions okay you will be doing a lot of things you will basically you will be playing with the partitions so you need to have a good command or uh, these uh, uh, eight uh, catalog views for example see here this query shows show me the all the records from this table also show me which partition that record belongs to so you need to pass the create date partitioning key to the partition system partition function then it will show you the partition number of the record so every record will display also which partition that record uh, belongs to it will also show that you know you can uh, you know you can also use some different queries hey this query says every partition has how many number of rows okay 4 2 2 5 right same thing you go to this partition and see 4 2 2 5 there okay uh, you know you can use uh, you know these are programming uh, stuff okay so i wanted to see the records for partition 2 okay then i'll say i'll say i'll use that partition function i'll pass that and i'll say hey uh, show me that are in partition 2 now now you see that we how many number of partitions we have we have these are the boundary points okay so from 2000 see uh, no from 2014 we are storing all the records in one partition okay but actually we, every year we have to create a partition right so in 2015 we have uh, january 2015 we are supposed to create one more boundary point that means creating a new uh, range all the two all the records for 2014 should be in one range should that range should be in one file so all 2004 should be in one file from for 2015 we wanted to be on a, on a different file okay so that means you have to create a boundary point for 2000 january 1st 2015 okay when you create a boundary point think about it then you have to specify okay you see that here This is uh, 2014. Sorry, this is what we specified, right? 2012, three boundary points. Okay, so now we have to create how many ranges we have? <coughs> so, totally three, four partitions. Okay. So now we we wanted to create two to boundary point 2015. Okay, when we, when we say okay, I wanted to partition 2015 data. Okay, I wanted to store all 2014 data in one file. Then then I have to create a boundary point at 2015. I have to I have to divide a separate range. Okay, then in that case I have to specify where this 2005 range. Okay, any any record greater than uh, 2015, where where it has to go, I have to specify a new file. File means file group, right? File group contains the files. So I have to specify a new file group. Before I create the boundary, I have to specify what is the what is the new file group because I'm I'm splitting the I'm splitting that file into two. So now I have to specify I have to before I split I have to specify this is my next next available file group if you split this is the file group you, you are you are you are going to use it so you have to specify first what is my next available file group okay what is a new file group i'm going to use you have to specify that okay so you have to say so for that you have to specify
what is my new file group I am going to use okay so I am going to use 2015 okay so obviously I have to specify a file for 2015 right see here now I created the file group but I have not altered altered the partition scheme now I have to alter the partition scheme saying that hey if you split the range and this is the next this is the file group you are going to use okay but I haven't split the uh, sp uh, split the fat of uh, uh, I haven't created the boundary point yet so first I will specify this okay now let's uh, execute this query now you see 2015 the partition scheme it is ready to use this 2015 you can change it to primary okay so you can change it to primary so you come here take a look at it it is primary okay you can change it just because changing okay 2015 so okay that is what it is uh, so next next file group I'm going to use 2015 now let's uh, split now I'm splitting I'm creating a new partition for from January 1st 2015 I'm going to store in this is where actually the splitting occurs okay when I split it you can see that here split occurred now split occurred now you, you see if I refresh see that here 2015 new boundary I create a new boundary and now it doesn't change okay so now what happened uh, let's take a look at uh, this query again I wanted to see all the records and show me the partition number which partition that record is in okay now you will see 2015 from 2015 it is in the new partition partition number 5 okay so total it has got 5 partition so what happened actually so now we achieved okay we what we did now we create a new boundary and uh, earlier earlier what happened one file group okay so uh, I don't know file group maybe FGL 2014 right that file used to contain all the records from 2014 and 2015 okay that file used to contain all the records now we created new boundary and we have specified FGL to FGL and we and we said okay now I wanted to store uh, uh, 2015 data in the new uh, file group then what happened actually first we specified uh, we altered the partition scheme we said hey uh, this is the new file group okay and after that we altered the partition function we said I wanted to create one more boundary point at that time when I say create split the partition that means create one more boundary point at that time what SQL server did it collected it took all 2015 records 2015 records from this file and moved into this file the data movement occurred okay in our case it the, the split happened within a split second because it has had, it has got just two records think about it if it if, if, it, if it has two, 2 million records or 200 million records okay if you have 2,200 million records for 2015 then all the 2015 records will be moved will be will be deleted here will be moved actually will be moved from this file to this file so data movement will occur okay because we are specifying this file for 2015 onwards that means whatever the records in this file 
so you got to be really careful okay so you don't want to wait for too long uh, you know already in 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 2015 and now you are splitting january 1st 2015 so you are moving the data from literally from one file to another file so you will be creating bunch of blockings if it is a live transaction server okay so you might have to take a downtime and do this uh, ag ag activity okay this operation uh, is uh, not is a uh, you know it's going to create a lot of uh, blockings and all those things okay so that lot of data movement occurs so that is why you have to be uh, very careful in in creating the boundaries so you can create the boundaries for 2016 now you can create boundaries for 2017 now okay you don't want to create boundaries uh, you know in the uh, after the uh, after the boundary point date okay so that is what the range right means so when you say so what happens if you do range left okay think about it think about it you have 2000 you have 2014 data right fgl 2014 it used before we split <coughs> before we split this is the file group it, it used to contain 2014 onwards january 2014 onwards correct and we, we since we have the range right what happened we created the boundary point and we and we created the new range and we created the new file and we moved all the data from 2014 to 2015 okay if if think about it if it is a range left what would happen then this file okay this file will be created here okay and this file will be will be here that means in from 2014 okay from 2014 it moves all 2000 from this uh, from this fgl 2014 file group it moves all 2014 records into this file group and it will have 2015 records that is the difference between range range right and range left when you say range right the new file that you are going to create will be created on the right side if you say range left then it will be it will create on the left side okay because where the boundary point is boundary point here if you say range left then the boundary point will be on the left side on this file okay this boundary point will be will be on this file similarly this boundary point will be on this file okay so if if the partition function is range left and you create a boundary point the new file will be created here and all the 2014 records will be will be moved here and 2015 records will be as usual will be on this file it will be there so the data movement will be much more because it has to move all 2014 records <coughs> okay so that is what the range right and range left so we created a new boundary okay we create a new partition that is what splitting means so you are splitting the range you are splitting the partition now you are merging the partition so what is merging the partition so if you see here now you are in 2015 okay so you, you are in 2015 and this is 2014 2012 you have four boundary points correct you can see that here you have four boundary points so you can see that here there are four boundary points right so these are the four boundary points now in 2005 
you are in 2015 actually right this is the range that you are in any record that is greater than 2015 will be in this file group in this range generally you don't need in you don't need to you generally you don't browse the data in this range in this range actually in in this range of data i would say, i have to say in this range of data how many partitions are there <coughs> there are two partition this is partition 1 this is partition 2 i don't need two partitions uh, you know because uh, i don't access this uh, this these two partitions because i am already in 2015 i don't care about data which is less than 2013 so i can merge i can merge these two partitions okay in order to merge combine these two partition all i have to say is remove this boundary point that's it all i have to say is just remove this boundary point okay if you want to create new partition for example you are we are uh, in let's say we are in 2013 okay sorry 2016 in 2016 i have to split the partition i have to split i have to split this partition when i split this partition i will be creating two partition to i have to, when i remove this boundary point then i will be merging these two partition okay so now you see that here I have, I'm going to the, the last boundary point is 2012. So I'm going to merge, I'm going to remove this boundary point. Okay, let's see what happens. See that here. 2012 is no more there is no more 2012 okay so we have 2013 we said we are removing this boundary point okay now let's see the partition scheme partition scheme now there is no file group 2012 because 2012 is merged into 2000 <coughs> 2000 okay so whichever the partition has the range range right whichever partition has the the boundary point okay in this case before before the merge before i remove the boundary the boundary point used to be on our, our right side that means fgl 2012 has the boundary point had the boundary point now i removed the boundary point so that to fgl 2012 whatever data in fgl 2012 okay will is moved to uh, fgl uh, to 2000 okay so you have to observe that okay so the data movement occurred all the data from file group 2012 is moved to 2000 finally that file group is removed okay so now i can go here and I can remove it. I can I may not remove because still the files will be there. Okay, so I can remove this file. Uh, yeah, the file is not there. File group is not there. Okay, cool. See here. Now it's no more. okay so that's what uh, so again let's take again let's take a look at uh, file group 2012 is not there and uh, 2012 file is not there okay so this file group is automatically removed that means the data from this file group is moved to fgl 2000 and that file group we removed it altogether from the database okay so that's what uh, you mean by merge okay so that's how you uh, split merge <coughs> the partitions so there are other uh, things that we need to talk about uh, partition sorry uh, sliding window so when you have to select range right and when you have to select range left okay so it, it really depends okay i would say uh, depends on what what is your requirement you can pick one of one of them 
So you can, you saw that now when we removed this boundary point 2013, FGL 2012, this file, whatever the data in this file, has been moved to this file. Okay. Sometimes you see that. <coughs> See, let us say, uh, let us take sliding window technique. Okay, there is uh, there is a technique. Generally, what happens? Um, let us say this is what uh, in OLTP environment. Okay, in OLTP environment, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. Okay, every uh, from 2012, you have. Uh, one partition okay that contains uh, records uh, back from okay uh, back you know from 2000 or 2000 whatever the date okay so this these are the partitions generally you have let's say you have the requirement <coughs> every year okay in 2016 you will create one partition in 2016 you will create one partition okay you will create a boundary point that means you will split this partition okay in 2016 and you wanted to remove this you wanted to remove this file group you don't you don't want this partition every year every year as you keep moving your window is for five years okay this is your window so this is your window actually five years window you work with so you don't need this uh, file group you don't need data for 2011 what you can do is you can unload this data you can unload that means remove the data archive it to some other place unload the data and after that remove this uh, boundary point right when you remove this boundary point <coughs> See, uh, what happens, uh, you are in 2015, when you go to 2016, see, in 2015, <coughs> okay, let's say you have this boundary point. You are in 2015, your window, your five years window, okay, you need to ma manage, you need to maintain, you need to have five years of data in your partition table, okay, that is the requirement. And, in, and when you go to 2016, what happens? Your your five year window starts from 2012. From here it starts. Okay, that means this data you don't need from the OLTP table, right? This is a OLTP table. This partition table is in OLTP database, and you don't need 2015 when you are in 2016. So what you have to do in 2016, you have to remove this data. Okay, and create. <coughs> Uh, you know a boundary point in 2016 you have to create a new boundary point and you have to remove this uh, partition that's that's all that's all your requirement that's that's your uh, sliding one of the sliding window technique okay <coughs> so what you have to do you have to in so in order to achieve that what you can do you have to switch out you have to switch out the data to a staging table staging table okay switch out the data in staging table this will take less than one second okay and remove this boundary point that means merge these two partitions when you merge you don't want to you don't want to move this file group you don't want to move the data from this file group to this file group right but you wanted <coughs> You wanted the data from this file group to this file group, but there is no data in this file group because we already switched out, right? We already switched out the data. When you switch out the data, that means the data in this file group will be zero. There, is, there are no records. Then after that, what you can do? Hey, I wanted to merge these two partitions, but I wanted to move the data from this file group to this file group because there is no data movement, right? It's so fast. It will be so fast if you merge a partition if when there is no data that means <coughs> see if in order to move the file group from here to here right 
this this got to be this 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 partition function has to be range left when it is range left the boundary point will be in this file group so this file the data will be data in this file group will be moved to this file group only if your partition function is defined as range left right <clears throat> you have to see you have to define uh, the partition function and all those things based on your requirement first you have to understand the requirement and after that based on that you have to chalk out a design you have to work out a plan okay what is my partition function is it range right or range right, range right or range left okay what is the partition key okay all those things you have to you have to design and decide okay so simply in order to just unplug 2011 data you, what you have to do is do a switch out that means switch out means move the partition whatever the data in this partition to a staging table okay you have that is just one second you can move the data okay Inter internally how it works i'll tell later but switch out is what switching out the data from partition into a staging table or another partition uh, another partition of another partition table okay once you move all the data then there will be zero records in this file group then you then you remove this boundary point that means you are you merge this file group with this file group in order to do that you have to have a range left partition function defined on this table then this file group will be moved to this file group if it is range right then this file group will sorry then this file group will move to this file group you don't want that to happen that will be a lot of data movement and that is not necessary and that is not what you want you want a 2011 file group to you wanted to get rid of 2011 when you are in 2016 okay maybe you might be have in if you're if you're in the data warehouse if it is fact table okay in the data warehousing you might want to unload and load typically you know in, in the sliding window technique sometimes so to unload switch out the data fine and switch in the data right because your your new window has slided to right side okay i hope you got the point here basically uh, you need to understand range range left and range right clearly okay range range right means the boundary point will be on the right side of the partition and range left means left side of the partition when you split then range right means your new file file group will be created on the right, right side when you split when you split uh, range left then the new file group will be created on the left okay similarly when you uh, merge the boundary point okay then where the boundary point is okay if it is a range left that means the boundary point is here and this file group then this file group will be moved moved to other file group when you merge okay if it is range right then this file group will be moved to this file group. so you have to remember all those things it depends otherwise you know you will be end up moving move you know doing the data movement and creating a lot of uh, uh, blockings okay <clears throat> that's why sometimes it's uh, better to create one extra brown boundary point for 2017 to avoid the data movements hey be on safe side okay create a boundary point for 2017 now okay uh, so you can do all the switch in switch outs and all those things okay okay so now let's talk about switch out <clears throat> so what is switch out so this is 2012 this is 2013 uh, sorry let's take our, our our scenario okay so what are the number of what are the partitions that we have see here we have 2013 boundary okay so what are the records that we have so i think anything less than 2013 okay anything less than 2013 will be on one part partition number one okay <clears throat> let's take a look at uh, okay so this query this query shows displays all the records okay now let's see you see that here partition one has how many records one two uh, maybe six records correct so 
I wanted to delete these six records. That's uh, not delete. Yeah, delete. Uh, f you know, uh, purging or you know, archiving and all those things are considered as a delete on the main table. Okay. So you wanted to delete the partition one, the records for the partition one. Okay, you don't want it. Okay, you want that means you wanted to switch out the data from the partition table into into a staging table. Okay. The staging that uh, okay 2013 right anything less than 2013 okay <coughs> okay so this is uh, 2013 so this is 2014 2015 okay so you have lot of records in this partition this is partition 1 partition 2 partition 3 there are four partitions okay earlier we used to have uh, a partition uh, boundary point for uh, 2012 but we, we we merged it we removed the boundary point and we removed the okay so this is in in which file group this partition 1 is in which file group okay so we have to find out that so let's go here The first partition is in FGL 2000 file group. Okay. FGL yeah, 2000. Okay. 2000 file group. Okay. This is uh, FGL 2013 file group. All right. So now, in this file group, we have to create the staging table. To we, we, our our goal is to uh, to remove the data from this file group, from this partition. Okay, this partition means this file group. In this file group, we wanted to remove the data. So what we have to do in the same file group, we have to create. staging table so what is that staging table Stag staging table is you know a table which has the same structure as this one okay that structure means uh, a, a staging table means a table which has the, which uh, which needs to have the same column name uh, uh, column names uh, the column data types uh, the nullabilities okay constraints all those things clustered indexes clustered index okay so everything the table definition has to be same okay so you have to create a staging table okay let's create a you create a staging table called dst okay this is just a regular table non partitioned uh, table okay then then you have to do a switch out you have to say you have to switch this partition number 1 to st you have to specify alter table switch partition 1 to st okay you have to you have to say like this when you say like this then it what it does <coughs> it it doesn't move the data actually it doesn't move the data from this partition to this partition what what actually it does it just creates a empty partition okay it just flip that uh, it doesn't matter data switch actually internally it doesn't matter data switch okay this partition okay this partition has the data okay so what happens when you do a metadata switch then this partition will be named as st and it will create a new partition with empty partition and this will be one okay but for that it needs to have schema lock so it, it acquires a schema lock and it does a partition switch so one second it doesn't move the data one second this this content name is will be different and this content will be different <coughs> that's what happens okay so but user as a user uh, as a dba you know wh what we have to you know think like you know okay so it moved the it switched out the data from this partition 
it moved the data from this partition into this table that's what we have to assume or we have to we have to go go with <coughs> so in a less than a second you removed millions and billions of rows from the from the table that's what happens <coughs> so let's take a look at it let's see how to switch out uh, partition okay i don't have the syntax for it but let's create a, see here right click and you have the storage okay manage partition create a staging table for partition switching right we need a staging table before we switch out the data from from fgl 2000 from this uh, from this partition right this partition is what uh, fgl 2000 right so okay let's create a staging table the staging table uh, okay partition which partition we wanted to remove we wanted to remove this partition fgl 2000 you see that here okay let, let's create a script you see that here actually we have some gui options that does certain things very easily okay so there is a manage partition so i use that gui option to create uh, the staging table so see here what it did it creates the table in the same file group that we wanted to switch out okay Th that is a requirement the that partition the, see this table the data in this table for for this table okay <coughs> this is a non uh, this is a non partition table so you are you are using the file group here this is not a partition scheme so this is a non partition table okay just one partition for this table okay so, but that partition has to be in the same file group that is a requirement okay that's how and see here the names are different uh, the the collation and the uh, nullability uh, data types data length everything is same everything should be must be same as uh, same as uh, the partition table that we wanted to switch out okay uh, fgl uh, invalid file group why do we have to be in this uh, this table okay in this database so i change the database context now i'm going to going to create i created the staging table okay uh, I didn't change the name. It has got uh, it has got some crappy name. So let's leave with that. I'm fine. So next step is uh, you see that <coughs> it is creating the clustered index. Okay, clustered index on create date on the same partitioning uh, key. Okay, it is creating the cluster index. So if you see that here primary key which is by default cluster index okay primary key the default cluster so you are we are we did we created a cl cluster index on create date so we the staging table has to be has to have it needs to have the cluster index on create date okay on this file group all right let's create cluster index so what are the other requirements it needs to have a check constraint check constraint should say hey this staging table should only contain data less than january 1st 2013 right january 1st you see that here january 1st 2013 so the the the, the first partition has the data less than january january 1st 2013 that's what the check constraint the check constraint has to be there okay so now we have the state that is what the staging table requirement is so once we have the staging table with these requirements then now you are ready to switch out so to switch out i don't know the syntax let's uh, uh, generate okay so we wanted to switch out this partition okay do you want to create a new staging table no i already created let's use existing staging table right just before we create a staging table so in the same fgl 2000 file group so i wanted to switch out from this select the staging table next next finish you will get the syntax okay let's remove this garbage <coughs> okay so the syntax is very simple alter table we wanted to switch partition one to the staging table that's pretty much it 
okay so when you do that that's it it's done so you can see that see see it has now six records okay whatever the records here these six records has been moved to the staging table now orders right it has seven records see here 13 records 13 rows now if i refresh so now you don't see number one partition number one it has been moved out see the definition still it will be there so if you see the the partition scheme the definitions are still there okay the ranges everything is there it is there it is just that we moved out the data so what happens if you insert new data for example in 2010 okay now i'm inserting a new record into in 2010 in this partition orders table okay so what happens the record will be in the partition table okay but can i can i move out see <coughs> to switch to switch out the data staging table has to be clean it should not have any records okay uh, okay now i have one record can i switch out this data to uh, the staging table let uh, let's do it let's see if uh, it allows to do okay now i'm switching the data from this partition to existing partition okay uh, finish oh same thing right we don't need this screen i'm closing that so let's execute one more time see this require see this requirement the target table must be empty uh, to switch out the data similarly if you are switching in you are bringing the data from staging table into a partition that partition should be empty for the switching okay so that's the requirement actually so you can see that here it, uh, it will give the same problem for switch switching in all as well so that's what uh, switch out and uh, switch in means um, let's see what else we have it we have here so see here in the document uh, i have attached some sample whatever the demo scripts i used whatever scripts i used in demo i have uh, pasted it here so you can try out uh, these scripts okay if you are trying out um, uh, these uh, examples uh, you can download from metamanager.com and uh, execute the scripts okay so <coughs> here i have uh, you know in the in the document i have uh, given one uh, stored procedure in fact i copied the stored procedure from one of the website um, databasejournal.com basically this stored procedure lists out what are the worst performing queries okay uh, take the worst performing queries and see the way the queries are performing bad okay so you can find out okay uh, why it is doing index scan okay why it is doing scanning more what can i do to tune that query can i create indexes will that help uh, then you know you might be bloating the database with a bunch of indexes but still the queries are running slow but what else i can do okay so you know based on the top uh, worst performing queries uh, you can figure out okay how best you can design a table for the partition okay you can decide what is the partitioning key and uh, all those things okay so now let's look into uh, if let's see if there are any other things to cover Okay, we covered uh, partition split merge. Okay. Um, okay, so for switching the partition, switch in, switch out, the staging table requirements are here. Okay, the staging table should be of same data definitions, and there are there are a bunch of requirements. Okay, what we have seen, the staging table should be should have the same columns, uh, data types, and the check constraint. And the clustered index right there are more much more than that what we have what, see we have we have a very simple table okay think about it there are tables with where care where binaries text okay uh, for, you know you might be having GUID columns you might be having there are so many things you can 
and if those tables if you are doing partitioning and uh, creating a stage sta staging table for those partition partition table you have to know the requirement okay so there are bunch of requirements for the staging table so if you read this uh, you will understand uh, those requirements again i copied this uh, requirements from this website this website has uh, uh, some nice articles you might want to read this website okay uh, this is how you switch uh, uh, partition to non partition table there are some examples i have given and there are some best practices uh, <coughs> if you are doing sliding window technique uh, as i told you the window will be keep sliding right you wanted to maintain just four years of data in that in the table okay and next year the window will move next window, window will move right right so in that case uh, you might want to unload the data and probably you might want to load the data okay so in that case uh, it's better to have a range left otherwise you will end up doing a data movement okay if you understand the concept you will figure out that you need range left for the sliding window. 